are up against the qualifiers, Jesper Toff and Clara Graveson. Well, that's what the mixed doubles draw looks like. Sheng Shi Wei and Huang Yashong book their spot in the final, looking for their fifth overall title with a fantastic win against Kim Won Ho and Zhong Na En. Which of the two are going to uh, face them in the final? It's good to see four different nations represented in the semi finals here at the Indonesia Masters. Technical officials and umpires making their way out to court one. So, here they come. And I don't know whether you spotted it or not at home, but uh, there is a slight height difference between the pairs. I don't know how tall exactly Jesper Toft is, but um, that's what's been making a great difference especially in this wonderful run. And I guess what, what's really important for them is they have to calm their nerves on the big stage now into the last four and up against capable opponents. They've met once before. That was at the Ben Belgian International 2021. Saito and Midorikawa uh, winning in straight games. Red. Red. Okay, so one with a coin toss. And this is going to be interesting, Jenny, to see which side Red. gets picked. You will see, not only see. This side, person, okay. They've chosen that this side. Yeah. Again. It didn't work out for the it Indonesians. It did, didn't work out for the Indonesians. It hasn't worked out for a few people. But I'm going to have to take a guess here. Oh, well, actually, we're going to find out now exactly how tall uh, Jesper Toft is. But I myself, I've never seen anyone that tall on a Baba de Court before. Um, there was a Brazilian player that was actually playing who is that tall? Right, we'll find out right now. Hiroki Midorikawa, uh, 23 years old. The young pairs coming out of Japan, currently ranked 13, and have been as high as uh, 12. They're peaking very well. That was in October of last year. And there's his very capable uh, female net partner, Natsu Saito. And they have been putting in some great performances this week, all in all. Just another solid Japanese pairing, really. And there are their results. It was Chu in Somerville in 30 minutes. Um, Li and Unsi Zhao from Hong Kong, 36 minutes. And that was the big one. Three games, 50 minutes against Zhang Zhenbang and Wei Yazin. But as we were just discussing, uh, Wei Yazin possibly with some medical issues for that match. Yeah, I was just saying that <laughs> a huge 200 centimeters, yeah. <laughs> That's unbelievable. He's definitely going to use that height to his advantage Absolutely, in the game. Absolutely, yeah. But fast, he's quick, isn't he? Yeah, he uses a... Uh, having watched Toft and Graveson in the past and also having played them myself, they definitely use... Toft especially uses his height to his advantage and uses it to set up Clara at the net. Right, yeah, that makes sense. It's basically... It's a basketball trick, actually, to, to have that... Uh, to have the little large, as it's known. But we were talking about Wei Yazin, and she had a couple of medical problems? Yeah, I saw on uh, Twitter that she was sat in the interview area after her match yesterday in the quarterfinals um, with like a, bl a blood pressure yeah. machine on her arm and getting checked out by the medical staff. So hopefully she's OK. Well, looking at their results so far, as you can see, they played qualifying matches as well. Uh, but just that one game dropped in round two uh, for Toft and Graveson. It's been pretty solid from them all in Ready all. Chun Ching Feng, our umpire, joined by our service judge, Raventus Pongo. Well, funnily enough, having a 200 centimeter uh, Jesper Toft, Midori Kawa is actually shorter than his partner. He's five foot three. She's 5'5", five five, if I remember rightly. So this height difference might seriously come into it. Yeah, but both both using their height to different advantages, and it's 
fantastic to see that players of all sizes are, can oh, yeah. play to such a yeah, good level at badminton. Absolutely. What I'm interested in doing, and I said I've, I've kept up with their Ladies results, but I haven't had the chance to see them in action, Am I right? um, is Saito. whether Midori Kawa and, and Saito are going to start Midori playing Kawa. to the feet, Japan. So getting him to try and work low. Of course, Clara is there to pick up those shots. And yeah, one left. of Toff's biggest strengths Robert is his mid-court control. So off. even when he's below Denver. the height of the net, he's got really good touch to just play these shots back to the net. Hold on. He Robert can get Robert below the height of the net. Yeah. <laughs> Those legs go down. <laughs> but he's using his long Three. limbs to his advantage. Yes. He can cover so much of the court. Well, that's exactly it. You know, a lot of, as we get underway here, a lot of the, um, a lot of uh, discussions have one. been had about height, especially with the likes of Akane Yamaguchi, actually, because she was one of the shortest world number ones that has dominated the game because of her court coverage, because of her recovery. Yeah. Every height comes with its own advantages and disadvantages. Well, so far, it looks like Toft has an automatic smash. She just has to basically, his drive is going to be top-level smash. Oh. Yeah. And where Midori Kawa, he's not the tallest of male mixed players, but he is so unbelievably springy yeah. that he almost gets up to those kind of heights. Ooh, that's just wide. And into the safe side Two, of the court as well. One. Well, the word fairy tale has been used. It's been a fantastic run. It's so difficult for qualifiers. And a lot of people don't know this because of the qualifying rounds. They never really get the coverage that they should. But for qualifiers to come through, they've actually said this week as well, Clara, and that they, they just Three, wanted to make the main draw. One. So to come all the way to the semi-finals and take out some great opposition, that's just been a dream come true for them. Yeah, but when you're coming from qualifying, and as you said, they have the, the sole goal really of just playing as well as they can and yeah. getting through to the main draw, you end up playing free, and that's the times that you play some of your best badminton. Well, they've made a good start here, 3-1. They seem to be controlling the semi-final atmosphere, enjoying it. Ranked 44 in the world. They were finalists at the Scottish Open. They were semi-finalists at the Belgian International. And as for a 2024 record, this is their first event this year. That's nice. That's unlucky. That's the style of play, though, that they should definitely be Three, trying to use the Danish four. pair. He's using his control there on the midcourt, setting himself up for the lift, but just missed that final smash. Did he just break a racket? <laughs> I think he just uh, replaced his racket off that smash. very very good defense but I think they have to be careful here of relying on it too much yeah and they've got to kind of rejig it as well because it's not just going to be your standard attack that's coming in so 200 centimeters that's six foot six I'm 6'2", oh. I'm scared of that. <laughs> Victor Axelsen, of course, 6'4", is world number one. He's made that height work to his advantage. Five, four. Uh, Midori Kawa will have to try and do the same thing as what Toft is also trying to do, of controlling that mid-court, getting them playing below the height of the net and setting Saito up for those net kills that she's so good at. Well, so far, they are acquitting themselves very well. Still having the obvious problems with the back line from this side of the court. Oh. Keeping pace with the scoreline, that's what it's all about. Natsu Saito, double bronze medalist at the World Junior Championships. That was in 2017, 2018. She's just 23, of course. Good switch 
bench for Midori Kawa there. I would think that, as I said, Midori Kawa and Saito have been on the main draw on the world tour. They know the kind of reliability and efficiency you have to come up with. Might come down to unforced errors. We've seen Toft and Gravison already push it long and wide a couple of times. Yeah, I think maybe Toft and Gravison might come into this game with a few nerves. Yeah. It's oh. quite a different situation coming onto court and you're the only court that is being played oh, and, yeah. and all eyes are on you. <laughs> yes. And sometimes that can play on your mind a little bit. Absolutely, I never thought of that, that's so true. Yeah. Especially when you walk out of the tunnel and you just see that big patch of green, it's like that's where I'm going to be playing. Yeah. Whereas Midori Kawa and Saito, they've been in these situations before, so Absolutely. they might be using that experience to their advantage. Picked up their first okay. win, Super 500, Canada Open against Thierry in Mailund. And also runner-up at the Australia Open last year uh, against Feng Yangju and Huang Dongping. Another little large combination yeah. that's working very well. Oh, that's great from Saito. That's a good shot. Uh, super from Clara. She's so proactive at the net. Yeah. It seems to be so difficult to get it away from her as soon as she's on one, like that. Yeah, yeah. Then she's all over the next one. I like the dynamic. It's 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 a good it's a good mix. Yeah. And for Toft, of course, I mean, you can't really lift him, can you? Because that's, he's going to be able to he's going to be able to catch that. Oh, great from Toft. That answers the question about getting down low for shots. Wonderful play. Yeah, good rotation there from the Japanese pair. Now they have maintained this three-point lead. Kawa and Saito Nine. guilty of their own errors. fairly comfortably but then this last jump right. out from Toft here good angle and Saito just wasn't quite ready for it well so at the break 11-8 up but a lot to take away from that first phase of action Court. 
Second phase of game one. Saito. Oh, nice. Right down the middle. Oh, well Thank read you. from Saito there. Hey. Toff's been going for a couple of that kind of return and she looked like she read that completely. Well, when she's on her game um, up of the net, she's She's right up there. Yeah, I can tell she does a lot of training with Arisa Higashino. Yes, that's <laughs> it. They're very tight. Uh, these Japanese pairs. Mr. Watanabe and Arisa Higashino also have had a fantastic start to this year. Strangely enough, that's another combination where the female player taller. Yeah. Uh, male player. Watanabe, not the tallest of players. It's nice into the corner. 14-9. Fast place. Oh, wonderful pickup by Saito. Just slight 15. tweaks they have to make to their defensive coordination yeah they're just a bit hesitant at the moment That's I would right. say yeah a millisecond off maybe on, on what they should be doing yeah and that comes with experience and that comes with a force well, a long look from Saito off to a coach yeah and although we've seen a couple of errors like that from Miduroka and Saito it's always when they're in an advantageous position which will be making the Danes probably feel a little bit more stressed that yeah. although they are keeping within four or five points of them, at the moment they're not winning the points by yeah. being in really good positions. It's more the Japanese pair totally. making yeah, totally. easier errors. Errors over winners, for sure. Oh, went for the very steep angle. Just hit the top of the net. And they need to reset now, the Danish pair. Well, I do have to say, as I said, this is the first time I'm seeing them play this week, and I, I really do think that this dynamic and this combination, once they tweak it up, is going to be very, very effective. Yeah, what they were doing so well yesterday against the Indonesian pair. Push it down to it. Yeah, yeah they were getting above the height of the net and just controlling the midcourt, whereas at the moment today, it looks like they're a bit more tentative and they're lifting a bit more than maybe they did yesterday yeah well that's one part of the of the kind of game that you just can't really teach the, you know the, the the need the hunger to go forward and that killer instinct almost yeah um, and when you're coming up to it as i said when when i read the the press from them yesterday they were so in cloud nine of the fact that they made the semi-finals so it's a different psychological situation for them coming into this yeah sometimes when you've had a fantastic win like that and reaching the last rounds of these tournaments it's quite difficult to then mentally reset the yeah. following day just less than 24 hours later for an even bigger oh, match yeah. and i can tell you now as a as a sports journalist i can tell you now the press doesn't make it easier the questions and the praise that they would have got from reaching the semi-finals would not have been the same as the questions and the praise they would have got throughout the week yeah. it builds you up That's gone long. So 18-12 and Midori Kawa and Saito looking good for this first game. Yeah, just struggling with that back line a little bit in this first set. But it has been, as you said, a game that has been defined by errors as opposed yeah. to winners. Yeah. No. Play on. Well, top denied by the umpire. I think that was for a wipe down. I'm sure the umpire's done that because we're so close to the end of the first game anyway. That's an easy kill. Wonderful movement by Saito. Yeah, she's done her homework from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese pair, they did their homework, for sure. But it's a 
difficult shot for Toff to do anything else because if he's going to push it straight down the line, yeah. then that's that dangerous right-hand side where we've seen a lot yeah. of players sometimes forget about the drift. It's just generally more difficult to play down that line. They have done well in limiting his options as to the shots he can play. in the first game, 21-12 in 14 minutes. Seconds. Coach. Coach. So, about getting ready for the second game. Midori Kawa is eager to get it underway. First out on court. Change of ends, of course, and now we get to see what this really fascinating dynamic between Clara Graveson and Jesper Toft can do from the good side of the court. All up to, throughout the, the matches that we've watched, I've been saying the slightly okay, better yeah. side, but now it's certain that that Double. is the good side of the court from uh, the results and the play that we've watched. Yeah, and it will be interesting to see now how the Japanese pair deal with the lifts because we saw a lot of a lot of the Danish pair lifting out the back of the court. So yeah. the Japanese style is typically quite defensive. So yeah, let's see if they uh, can manage to control their lift length. Straight onto the attack for Norikawa and Saito that time. One, and he actually got that first point. Did think that first point had clipped the line. Looks like that initial service from the Japanese pair was out. Oh, that's oh, lovely. That's very nice. That's that control I was saying at the start that Toff was playing so well yesterday. service action from Jesper Toft. Oh, nice flat return. Oh, that's wonderful. That's the kind of aggressive Three, stepping up the call that the Danish pair are going to need to do. Well, once again, it's about the next step. And for them, it's about claiming this second game. Regardless of that, whether they pick up the second game, whether they do win or lose, they've already made their headlines this week. And I think the confidence they'll get from a run like this, going this deep into the tournament, means that for the next few tournaments, um, they're going to really shine. Yeah, it's a great start to 2024 for 
Just a bit long. Yeah, unlucky from top, and it's the right idea to be stepping into these attacking shots. But maybe because Midorikawa is, yeah, he's hitting them at a higher angle. Toft is then hitting it also yeah. at a higher angle, and it's he needs to try and hit, hit it a bit steeper if he can, or with a little bit less pace. I guess for a, a, a normal player, when I say normal player, you know, of a normal size and height, the the court is is kind of too big. But for Jesper, he's kind of got to pull it back a bit because it's almost a bit smaller. Yeah. <laughs> Four, three. Yeah, Midorikawa. Although he does jump up very high and can get very good angle on his shots, he's typically hitting quite flat smashes. So you do have to yeah. change your angle of where you're holding your racket. That's nice. Yeah, very nice. Been there by Clara Graveson. That's unlucky. Again, yeah. Have to tighten up in terms of unforced errors. Fast exchange again. angle that came back that yeah. really phased Midori Kawa. That was all set up by Toff's serve there. He served with a good good variation. He served out wide to the tram line. So that's gone long. Six all. Still everything to play for. I do think the Danish pair have settled into this yeah, second set a bit more. Absolutely, yeah. They're playing the right style of play. I think generally they're in their just overall attitude towards the semi-final has been brilliant. That was the drift there. That was definitely the drift. Six. Skills then. That's great skill. Seven. Oh. That's a fantastic shot. Also into that safe side of the court as well. Helped. Oh, that was beautiful. Eight. Again, Seven. just a nonchalant little touch. You just think, no, there's no way he could have put any thinking into that shot, but because of the speed that he took it, it's yeah. worked out well. That shows the experience of him, Midorikawa, having played in these kind of holes before. Yeah, yeah. He knows that he needs to hit it maybe two feet inside exactly. of that line. Yeah, yeah. And then it will carry out. Yeah. Have to watch those errors. They've kept close in terms of score lines, just one point back, but that one point has always been from maybe a clip net shot or pushing it long at the back. You just get the feeling that they could push forward. You know, there is another level that they can, they can start hitting. Very delicate from Clara Gravison. That was a good little drop into front court. Great skills from top. I'm just thinking, I mean, six foot six guy, when he jumps up, that means that he's actually taking that smash 
high. Uh, roughly about nine foot, right? Yeah. That's and he's got to use that angle to his advantage. Yeah, yeah totally. That's the physics of it. It's just baffling. Yeah. It's really different adjusting your, your defensive positioning uh, totally. to a smash that's, that's coming from that's that angle. Exactly it. With the power that he puts into it as well. Body shot works. There just simply aren't enough sparring partners of that stature for you to work your defense from. You know, You're going to have to get someone holding a row of shuttles, yeah. probably standing on a chair or two chairs, maybe. <laughs> and a big cardboard cutout. Yeah. So 11 9 at the break. So back on court. Second phase of game two. All important for Gravison and Toft. And I think that was sensed by Midori Kawa and Saito. Yeah, and that's where he's so good. His agility is unbelievable. He was actually falling sideways. The lateral movement still manages to plug it. 12-9. Again not beyond the realms of possibility for Gravison and Toff to overturn this. Yeah, they just need to raise their level just by one or two percent. That's all it's going to take now. Absolutely, absolutely. They're going for the right shots, which is how they should be playing. You don't want to think, oh, I'm making mistakes on these shots and start playing the complete wrong tactics. But it's just about, yeah, cutting out these simple errors. 14, 9. So 14 9. Good serving from Midorikawa. Yeah, they've, they've been doing just, just what they need to do, uh, the Japanese pair. Yeah, the basics well. That's it. Fundamentals, that's the key word. Again, another perfect serve. He's not changing up the where he's placing the serve. He's just standing up, delivering almost a perfect serve. It's just dipping over the net every time. So 16-9, looking in a commanding position now. A little bit of confusion, but that's that steep angle working well. Good power there. And an important few points now for the Danish oh, pair. Yeah, absolutely. Crucial points. Working well for them. 11, 16. get into these closing gambits of each game it's so tempting to try and overcommit make it overcomplicated and don't get too eager on the shots body shot perfectly timed and placed and this is what has led Midori Kawa and Saito to the semi-final and what looks like to the final itself yeah they're not giving the Danish pair any leniency here really absolutely not I would say the Danes haven't played as well as they have all week, but yeah. equally the Japanese pair, they haven't let them. That's right. They've shut the door every time. And so 19-11, and it looks like Zheng Shi Wei and Huang Yashong 11. will be facing Japanese opposition 
in tomorrow's final. Great run, though, from Tofton Graveson all week. And headline makers. Yeah, no matter this final outcome, they can definitely go away from this tournament. Very oh, yeah. proud and pleased with their performances. But we've seen comebacks from this oh, yeah, before. I was just about to say the Midori Cohen Saito didn't just finish it off there. Two points here. That would be amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. And so, eight match points. That's over. 29 minutes on court. It's been effective, efficient stuff from Hiroki, Midorikawa, and Natsu Saito. But not yet. Well, that's the game. Uh, service error in the end. I have to check that one just to make sure. 21-12, 21-13 in 30 minutes. Fantastic stuff. The mixed doubles and women's doubles finals are now secure. And all that's left for me to do is thank you, Jenny Mayers, for joining me in the commentary box. It's been fantastic talking to you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. As we watch the final points, and the bowels all around the stadium for Midorikawa and Saito. And there's confirmation of it. 21-12, 21-13 in 30 minutes. Coming up next, it's the Ben Singles. Anders Anderson taking on Kundabin Vitesan. Don't go anywhere. Hello and a very good evening to you from the Estora Sanayan, part of the HSBC BWF Indonesia Masters 2024, our historic venue. Semi-finals day, the fifth match for you here is men's singles, the eighth seed from Denmark. Anders Antonsen takes on the current world champion, a sixth seed from Thailand, Kunlavut Vititsan. So, this is their path towards that 
final place nice to see four different nations contest